AI has been really the key word and phrase in 2023 as companies spanning from big tech to cybersecurity doubled down on development. Today, Time is releasing a comprehensive list of the most influential names in this space, from Elon Musk to OpenAI, Sam Altman. Jessica Sibley is here, Time Chief Executive Officer, to talk us through this list. Um, it's a pretty incredible list because you do have names like Elon Musk on there that people have heard of, a lot of big names, and you have a lot of names that aren't household names, but maybe they will be given the way that AI is going. Talk, talk us through how you put the list together. That's exactly right. We are so excited at Time to launch our inaugural Time 100 AI list. We have been extensively focused on this topic at Time. From the launch of ChatGPT, to the Time 100 Most Influential Companies, where we got unprecedented access to Sam Altman and his team at OpenAI. So today on time.com, you can look at the list. We are identifying and recognizing the most incredible individuals that are driving the conversation and shaping the future of artificial intelligence. The list is extensive, as you said, in terms of uh, identifying those that are uh, icons. So you mentioned Elon Musk and Sam Altman, and we've got Reid Hoffman and Eric Schmidt, and those household names in AI that we've been talking about. We also have so many individuals that are activists, that are entrepreneurs, that are technologists, that are policymakers, and leading a lot of other conversations around AI. The way, yeah. And so even as we think about some of those figures who are leading the conversation around AI, for a lot of the viewers here, they focus on the public markets. They focus on some of the names that are driving this, like an Alex Karp at Palantir who made the list, yes. like a Jensen Huang who made the list as well. So take us into how even of the figures that they have not heard of, who they should be keeping their, their radar on. Right. So for this list, we really looked at four different categories. Mm -hmm. The first will be most familiar to your audience, which are really those that are driving the conversation around uh, leadership. So they're the founders, the funders, the financers, the C-level executives that uh, in many cases are uh, at startups that are now having billion dollar valuations. The second are the thinkers, those that are focused on leveraging the technology around AI to solve the global societal challenges, whether that's in healthcare, whether that's in cancer, and even climate. Uh, we're also focused on the shapers, those that are in research, in academia, political scientists that are trying to understand ethics and equity around AI. And then finally, the innovators. How do you tie regulation? How do you tie uh, policy making to make sure that there isn't misuse in AI? So those are the four categories. One of the things that struck me about the list was actually how diverse it was, which is kind of surprising, I think. You know, I think people still think of tech as not necessarily very diverse. And it's also interesting given the discussion around potential bias in AI. Does this sort of make you hopeful that there are is such a diverse group of individuals who is working on this? Yes, we're really proud of the diversity and the globality around this list, as well as the age span. Mm -hmm. So this list, 50% are people of color, 40% are women and non-binary, and we have ages ranging from 18 to 76. So 18-year-old activist who's focused on ethics, who is running uh, on court justice and just met with the Biden administration, and then we have Jeffrey Hinton, 76, who left Google to focus on some of the dangers. But we're really excited about the diversity. McKinsey just came out with a report in July that said that jobs will be replaced more so by women than men as it relates to AI. So we're really excited to launch Women in AI in a platform that will continue throughout the year to uh, focus and recognize on who these women are and how we can change uh, that going forward. Yeah, as, as Julie was bringing up ethics, one of the people that is on this list, Margaret Mitchell mm -hmm. of Hugging Face, the chief AI ethics scientist, we actually had Hugging Face's co-founder, CEO, Clem on just a few weeks back after their most recent raise. When you hear from some of these founders right now, what, what are they telling you about where they would like to see the industry continue to move at this point? There's promise and there's perils. And so the focus is on driving innovation, driving efficiency, driving productivity, 
but using AI responsibly. I think um, another example, in addition to what Margaret Mitchell is doing, is Audrey Tang in Taiwan. She's bringing everyday citizens into the conversation around AI. So this doesn't have to just be a conversation about driving wealth and driving company value. This has to be a conversation about how this technology and how the leaders in the space that time has identified are going to make the world a safer, better place and that we could leverage AI to solve, again, some of the biggest challenges. Um, you've been a journalism executive for your whole career for a long time, and you've seen different waves of different technologies and different trends. How does this one compare to the other ones that you've seen in your career? We always feel that this is the biggest change ever. Yeah. Uh, this one probably is, I have to quote Sam Altman, we can't predict the future, we just don't know. We are going to cover this at time extensively. We're going to look at companies, we're going to look at individuals. We're covering this around the world. We've gone to India looking at startups and how AI is able to bring people out of poverty and give them use to technology, especially through voice and translation. We've gone to the UAA where they're leading in, uh, especially with the Minister of Artificial Intelligence, who's also on our list. So for us as journalists, for us at Time, we're going to focus on this and continue the conversations around AI. We got to go, but from what you've discussed with some of the representatives, even in Congress, who've made this list, does it sound like this is something that we should expect to come up in the 2024 election season, AI as a theme? We do. We did a really big piece in time mm -hmm. that caused the Biden administration to actually get together and create an AI plan. Mm. All right. Interesting. We'll look to see what more we hear from that plan and from Time Inc. as well. Jessica Sibley, who's the Time Chief Executive Officer. Thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much time. for having me.